thanks for having me today. And as the introduction said, I'm going to talk about NVIDIA as a group and humanoid foundation models. So um, my name is Yu Kuchu. I'm from uh, NVIDIA Research. So um, I have been leading this uh, uh, research team at NVIDIA called uh, Generalist Embodied Agent Research. Like, so we actually do a little bit like so foundation model for both virtual and the real agents, but like so, uh, the recent focus is more geared towards like so real world and physical AI applications, robotics. So the team has a uh, this uh, grand research mission that is to build foundation model for general purpose robot autonomy in the real world. Right. So throughout the years, we work on a variety of different robotic platforms, like from like a tabletop robot arms to four like robot dogs. But recently, we kind of converge on this. Uh, unified research platform that is humanoid robot. So this robot, as you can see from the picture, right? So they share a similar physique to human body, to arm, to leg, five finger hands. So they are well suited to be deployed to human-centered world. So the flagship projects and uh, uh, here we are doing is called as a group. That is a, a initiative to build a general purpose multi-model foundation model for humanoid robots. So our goal here is, uh, of course, not to just build the foundation model as a single artifact, but also to build uh, the entire tooling, infrastructure, computing platform to enable robotic foundation model training and deployment. So this includes the data pipeline, so the simulation framework for model training, evaluation, inference, and all the way to robot deployment with edge GPUs. So kind of before I talk about the two more um, two technical work that we do uh, under this uh, Groot um, umbrella, so let me kind of explain a bit about the rationale behind Groot, right? So I think our research principles are um, largely inspired by recent progress in neighboring field of AI, such as uh, natural language processing. So if you see early NLP models, and they are really specialist solutions that aim to solve a specific natural language problem, like such as like text parsing, sentiment analysis, summarization, or information extraction. So the recent development of large language model shows us that we can actually build a generalist NLP model by training on internet scale text data. So this language model are not tailored towards solving a particular task, right? So, but they have a general understanding of human language and, and word knowledge once they are trained. So as a result, so we can actually use this to solve a wide variety of NLP problems, right? So I can write Japanese haiku better than I do. So I can be a coding assistant to autocomplete my source code. Like, so I can use it every day. Uh, it can make plans for uh, my next trade publication. So if you think about solving any of this problem from scratch is an incredibly hard technical challenge, right? So, but having that kind of generalist language model allows us to create better specialist solutions. So now let's turn our eye to robotics and that's what we are focusing on. So uh, if you look back, like, so for the past, like, so two or three decades, uh, robotic research really collectively make a lot of progress in building specialist robotic system, right? So this system have shown amazing, sometimes human level performance in narrow domains, such as using a robotic hand to, to, to solve Rubik's cube, or like having a robot dog, a four leg robot dog to uh, navigate on, on even terrains. But even though that we have progress in specialist system, we're still far from that vision, that kind of science friction dream of having general purpose robot that can perform everyday tasks in human environment. And, and you notice the title that I call this general purpose robot as a specialized generalist. So by that, I mean, well, they should not be jack of all trade, I must have known. Uh, instead, they have a set of core competencies, um, but also they're always learning to acquire deep expertise in new domains. So how do we go there? So on our way towards uh, this general purpose robot, so we advocate for building a generalist robot model or that we call robotic foundation model that operate on open-ended objective uh, that are trained on massive data sources. So, and I see this pathway going from a specialist robotic system and to generalist robot model. And so that allows us to adapt and, and, and uh, customize um, this like a generalist robot model uh, to build a specialist generalist robot reflecting the recurring trend of innovation that we have seen in the past, like uh, just like large language model. So motivate 
by the promise of a humanoid robotics and also robotic foundation model. So we started this as a group initiative, uh, initiative a, a year ago. So this is announced by Jensen on stage during GTC 2024. So, so you might remember this scene from last GTC uh, in 2024, where Jensen stands in front of a bunch of humanoids where he was the only biological one. So, um, it, that's the beginning of uh, the group initiative, right? So in this effort, we kind of consider the entire life cycle of a physical AI development. So we take a, a simulation first approach here in NVIDIA to do uh, robot autonomy. So we're, that means that we argue that simulation and sensitive data will play a critical role here. So we develop the tools and, uh, and framework to generate high quality synthetic data in simulation with like uh, high quality graphics rendering. Uh, and then this synthetically generated data are used for our foundation model training. And once the model is trained, we'll deploy the model to the robotic hardware using our computing platform. So the GROOT initiative really covers the entire life cycle, right? So from like the simulation building, synthetic data generation, model training to to de uh, de deployment. So to realize this entire loop, we need to build computing platforms, which we call the three computer problem, just like the three body problem. So first computer is the OBX computer that runs on the cloud, right? So that allows us to generate high quality synthetic data. And then this data are uh, feeding into the DGX supercomputer uh, for large scale model training. And finally, uh, once the model trained, so we deploy the models on the edge computer, EGX, uh, our runtime computer for edge deployment. So all these computers, and uh, we provide the full stack solution at, at NVIDIA. So now that uh, with this high level overview of as a group, let me tell you a little bit more about our group N1 foundation model that, that we just released. Okay, so our model follows uh, a dual system design that is inspired by human cognitive processing. So the theory is described by the books Thinking Slow and Fast, which is already popularized, right? So it characterized the two thinking system of a human decision making. So you got a system one on the right that is a fast brain, uh, typically unconscious, intuitive, and reactive. So in robotics, you can think about it as like the role of low level closed motor sensor motor control in the here and now. And then on the left is a system two, right? So that's like the slow brain, uh, a conscious, deliberate effort of thinking. So in robotics, you can think about as the role of a, a high level cognition, reasoning, planning. So our model integrates these two thinking systems in a coherent learning framework. So here comes Gruten 1, that is the world first open humanoid foundation model. So it takes the visual observation of the robots and the language instruction as input and produce the robot action uh, as output. So let me use this example to illustrate how Gruten 1 works. Right? So we specify the task we want to do in natural language using some prompting interface. And then the system two module of N1 reason about the environment and determine what's the high level objectives, right? Identify the objects and reason about their spatial locations. And then the system one module produce the control actions to drive the motion of the robot to fulfill the target goal. So this is a showing the gluten one running and drive the motion of the uh, this robot to perform this task. So more concretely, just to share a bit more technical detail, and we use a vision language model as a backbone as a system two to process the image of observation and language uh, instruction in the form of tokens. And then the output tokens from system two are combined with encodings of a robotic state to feed into system one. And finally, so this system one uh, is implemented as a diffusion transformer model that generates a closed loop control command at 120 hertz. So, here are some videos of us showing how the model works and uh, like by picking a different kind of fruits and that's um, not seen during training, it generalized like to new kind of instance of fruits. Uh, it can handle longer hearts and tasks that involve some human robot collaboration that you can hand over a flower and then the robot like a hand back a glass of champagne in return. And it can do robot robot collaboration. Uh, this is a kind of a factory setting that we set up in the lab, right? You see that like so both robots are running the Groot N1 model. So they can kind of coordinate together um, to fulfill this kind of um, 
multi-stage manipulation task and in uh, the factory settings. So now for all this video that I show you, it's running at one X, right? So that means there's a real time, no speed up, and uh, uh, like the robot is fully autonomous, uh, like so driving um, powered by our Gluten 1 model. So one key feature of the group of one is is cross embodiment it means that uh, so uh it supports like a, a variety of robotic platform not only the robot I showed you before but also we work with this uh, human robotic company One X to deploy our models on their new human robots in household to do this kind of like a household daily chores like uh, like unloading loading dishwashers. And for more results, you can find our white paper now currently available on archive. We basically compare with uh, uh, um, the state-of-art imitation learning algorithms like on standard benchmark showing that it significantly outperforms uh, their performance. So what's really exciting is that like, so you don't really need a, a very expensive human noise to play with our model. So our model is currently fully open source, so you can play with it, even with a low-cost Rupert ARM that costs like 110 bucks that you can quickly ensemble at home or in your lab. Okay, so um, that's the kind of the, the, the group and one model. So for the last part, I want to also quickly mention about our Hover, neural whole body controller for humanoid robots. So the motivation of designing Hover is that we notice humanoids needs a, a, a diverse set of a physical capability, uh, which requires different control mode, right? So for navigation, you need to command the root velocity and have position for for manipulation you need to uh control the um uh, the, the arm and the fingers and then like so at the local manipulation you need to actually the whole body right so instead of designing the a different controller for each control mode we explore whether we can try one policy to facilitate all modes so that's the motivation behind hover um so the idea how we build this neural controller is a four-step approach right so first we have a large motion capture database and of human doing all kinds of activities. We can retarget that motions to the human robot to generate a tracking targets. And then we use reinforcement learning in Isaac Lab with GPU accelerated simulation to train a teacher policy uh, to track different modes. And then we distill that teacher policy into a generally student policy that supports um, this uh, variety of modes using one control policy, and eventually we can transfer that policy to um, another simulator through sim to sim or sim to real. Uh, so these are some uh, results showing that like how hover tracks the different uh, motion targets in different modes. And so here the dots like showing the active tracking target and then the color indicate the kind of tracking distance. So one surprising finding we see is that, uh, well, uh, by training this generalist controller, it actually outperformed previous work in building specialist controller that are, are customized for individual control modes. Uh, in other words, by training a generalist, it, it actually become a better specialist in different modes, right? Um, so that's the idea behind Hover, and uh, and uh, we developed this full pipeline in as a club and deploy to different simulators like Majoko and uh, and the real robot hardware for more information you can find this in our github link so i want to mention that like so nvidia uh, we take open sourcing very seriously right so we don't manufacture our robot in-house but instead we build our tools and the computing platform for our robotic partners in the ecosystem so we make group and one and the hover available on github so we hope this model and tools can help robotic developer accelerate their work and, uh, and in building their robotics application. So finally, uh, last word is uh, our team is actually hiring for research scientists, engineer, and, uh, and internship roles. So if you are interested, uh, feel free to check the website for more information. All right, thank you. Thank you, UK. And what UK didn't say is Groot runs on very small footprint like a jet sand. So you need to have a DGX to run this in France. So it's pretty nice.